When wilt thou save the people, O God of mercy, when? The people, Lord, the people, not thrones and crowns, but men. I was baptized in my grandmother's living room. It's true, it's true. I was baptized in my grandmother's living room, and it is one of my very favorite moments of my faith journey and of my life. I love sharing this fact with others as it seems to come as a shock to many. I was a young baby, and my family wanted to raise me to be known that I was a beloved child of God, a beloved child. No matter where I went or who I was, I was beloved. And so, as many of us do, my family chose to baptize me. And they believed that baptism was not a magic trick or something that was always needed to be performed in a fancy clothes or fancy buildings. We were not a very fancy family. For us, for our family, it was this setting, that living room, that was perfect. It was a place we were most comfortable, most ourselves. And we had not yet found a church home that was right for us. On that day, the spirit had moved in such a way that we knew it was right. Surrounded in community by ones who loved each other so much. I was cradled in the arms of a previous beloved pastor. And he splished and he splashed me right over my grandmother's pink carpet. There were family dogs at our feet, surely getting a little bit splashed. My older brother, then about three, his toy cars were surely scattered all over the room. My parents were in their plain old clothes, and my grandparents had just come in from the garden. A baby, loved so fully and honestly by people who were committed to their faith that they decided now was the time. Call up the family pastor, have him come here, now is the time. Our pastor met us how we were, where we were, in that very raw and real and right moment. I love this story, as I think it tells you a lot about who I am as a person and where I come from. Maybe a little bit about how I learned to be the type of pastor who preaches barefoot, and how I am someone who finds God most often in the simple yet holy woods of Maine. Baptism is a holy sacrament that connects us all so deeply and truly to the life and ministry of Jesus, helping us to be in conversation and connection with Christ himself in his holy humanness and in our holy humanness. Often during our baptisms, we are crying babies, Sometimes our bodies are bare in water that is cold to the touch. And sometimes we are young teenagers taking a risk and a literal leap of faith. These are very holy moments, yes, but they are also very raw and real moments. And in the story of Jesus' own baptism, as our scripture reading for today tells us. We know that Jesus too appeared honestly and fully to his cousin, his family, John. Maybe barefoot, maybe in casual clothes, and asked if he too could be baptized in the river. 
The moment was right and raw and real. John was known for baptizing others, and when Jesus caught wind of this, he too wanted in on the action, and he chose this time to reveal the action of the Holy Spirit and his beginning ministry. There was no time to wait. It had to be then. One who does not know the story, but who has heard of the greatness of Christ and the magnificence of his glory might imagine his baptism to have been in a temple or set at a time when thousands were gathered to watch. But at this time in Christ's ministry, he was a mystery. To many, and so his story was only just about to unfold. I imagine to a bystander, seeing Jesus and John splashing around, they might have looked like they were simply swimming together. Two friends sharing a love for one another and a love for their faith and their God. They were wearing simple clothing on a seemingly very ordinary day out in the Jordan River. But we know that it was no ordinary day. It was no ordinary act. This story was and continues to be one of the most sacred moments in all of our scripture stories one of the most retold stories of the Bible. And so we might find ourselves asking, why wasn't Christ's baptism more fancy? Why wasn't he dressed in fancy clothes if he is so magnificent? We know as we read through the Bible this year that this is just part of the narrative of Christ's ministry and that soon he will gather quite the following and stir up quite the ruckus. But why, we might ask, does his story start in such a simple way? We heard last Sunday of the mere bed and rags and hay that he first came into the world wrapped in. And yet, as Christ's ministry continues, he lives into adulthood, and he takes the path of the least and the lowly. Jesus, our text tells us, does not want to be the one baptizing John on that day, though he was surely worthy to do so. But rather, he asks John to be the one who blesses him and names him as a beloved child of God. Imagine that. This is another story I have grown up loving. Maybe you have too. The baptism of Christ is one we have seen portrayed in so many ways and so many stories. But one of my very favorites is the retelling of the baptism of Christ in the movie and the musical Godspell. Have you heard of it? Some of you were singing along with me earlier. As we go on in our journey of Jesus' ministry and we read the Gospels together, I hope you'll at least watch the movie. It can be helpful to put visuals with what we read and study together, and oh, did it do so for me as a child. I loved watching Godspell over and over, and I would sometimes even pretend while watching this scene to baptize my stuffed animals and my American girl dolls. While I watched that scene with Victor Garber, and David Haskell playing Jesus and John, respectively. If you've seen the scene, I'm sure it's going through your head now. I often would watch in my grandmother's living room, and the two of them 
playing John and Jesus, they break into powerful song, a song about hope and promise and future once they have been together baptized and forever changed. They sing, when wilt thou save the people, O God of mercy, when? The people, Lord, the people, not thrones and crowns, but men. And I would stand there, eyes glued to the television set, with a bowl of water at my feet, sprinkling my toys, naming them each as beloved, as I watch John and Jesus splash around in, as it's depicted in the movie, a New York City fountain. A retelling of the splashing that we heard of in our scripture for today. And back then, I also wondered, how could such a momentous occasion as the baptism of Christ be so simply put? as two friends splashing in a fountain. Shouldn't we be taking this more seriously? I remember thinking. Yet, yet, in its simplicity, I think the baptism of Christ could not have been taking itself any more seriously. Baptism is not just beautiful clothes and well-decorated churches, though those are lovely touches. But baptism, in its truest and raw and most real form, is a radical change in our lives and a radical new claim on our lives. Baptism lets us lay down the pomp and circumstance, put down the dramatics, and the anxieties of our lives and come simply and honestly to the water. With these waters of baptism, we are powerfully changed and called forth to act in Christian love, splashed and splished by the Spirit. Each of us, all of us, we may adorn ourselves in white clothes, and celebrate the day in the way that feels right for us. But no matter how you come to the baptismal font, or the lake, or the ocean, or the bowl on the floor of your grandmother's living room, God sees you and says to you, you are mine. I have called you, and I have chosen you, and I love you exactly as you are. The church, as well, promises to love you and support you, your community, your living room, whoever is around you promises to love and support and care for you your whole life. You are changed, you are new, when you are splished and splashed. When wilt thou save the people, O God of mercy, when? And so, let us take the charge and go out and baptize one another in fountains, in lakesides, in cups of water that spill at the dinner table. Let us remember to always come to these waters honestly and simply, but to take our baptisms and our faith oh so seriously. To dance and sing in fountains with friends while shouting from the rooftops with our newly and radically changed lives, God save the people. May we take oh so seriously that charge to go out as children of God, baptized or not, believer or not, and know that what you bring to the water is worth dancing for. May we splish and splash 
in the holy waters of the Spirit, even in our living rooms. Amen.